Amen. And uh, welcome again to another edition of the Watchman Radio Program. I am your host, Minister Curtis Roach from Shiloh Revival Tamanaka. Of course, you know why I'm here. I'm here to tell you all about the end times and to open up your awareness to the times that we are living in and to make you aware of the nearness and the imminent and soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to rapture his bride. For this reason, he has called me to do this radio program, to blow the horn, to sound the trumpet as a watchman on the wall, to let you know that he is on his way. Those of you who are there who are not ready for his coming, the little time that we may have, I would encourage you to get yourselves in order. Get yourselves spiritually packed and ready to go when he comes. His coming is very, very, very soon. I just want to thank you for tuning in. I just want to say a special hello to all of my regular listeners out there from across the world. I do appreciate the time that you have given me. Uh, the time that you have spared out of your busy schedule uh, to listen to this program. And I hope that as we broadcast from week to week, that it has been very encouraging and it has been a source of blessing to not only you, but those that are around you. Again, as usual, I would encourage you, if you have friends, especially the unsaved ones, your friends, families, if they do not know Christ as their Lord and Savior. I want you to just invite them to tune in to this broadcast. If not, if not uh, any other one, let them tune in to the Watchman Radio program. And uh, through this program, I know that their lives can be changed. That we can open up their eyes and awareness to what is really going on right now because we know that the enemy he's out there he's fooling a lot of people he's blindfolding a lot of people you know they really can't see he has totally put a, a blinder over their eyes so they are totally blind they're walking in blindness not knowing where they're going they're butting in here and they can't see but through programs like this these blindfolds can be removed so encourage them to listen uh, of course what I also do as well is I put these programs up on YouTube so that you can always go back to them so if you miss it here you can always get it again on YouTube and I'll give you all that information at the end of the program okay so today I want to continue from the book that I've started to read uh, certain chapters from uh, which book I'm talking about is that book that was dictated by the Lord himself to the prophetess uh, Susan Davis of course if you are a first time listener she is a woman of God that uh, she has been gifted in these end times in the area of hearing the audible voice of God and he has been using her in this way to dictate stuff to her words uh, letters of an encouragement of warning and so on uh, to bring to us and so she has been doing this faithfully and she has uh, compiled the book through a 40-day fast which uh, she was led to do by the Holy Spirit and uh, the Lord used her in uh, during this time to dictate these words to her which she compiled in the form of a book and this book she is offering for free it is totally free and uh, you can get it on Amazon um, I think uh, you can get it on Smashwords and other sources um, uh, the name of the book is the marriage supper of the lamb you can also google it and I think you will be able to find it it's a very 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 good book to read uh, of course as I said it's free for all Today I want to read two chapters, two short chapters in that book, um, chapter 6 and chapter 10. And it's basically talking 
about living in the world. And I want to get straight into it. Uh, the first chapter that I'll be reading is entitled Live in the World, but do not be of the world. So it's live in the world, but do not be of the world. Let us begin. Today I want to talk about living in the world. My children live in the world, but do not need to be of the world. The world is an enmity to me. I am disgusted with its overwhelming evil. Children, you can walk among those of the world without partaking of the things of the world. The world will lead you down the paths of destruction and heartache. James 4.4 4 says, You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. I am your only source of wholeness, peace, and calm. Do not turn to the world for direction. You will only be misled. You must turn to me for direction. Cling to me in this vital hour. I hold all your answers. I want to spare you sadness and grief. But you must turn your life over to me in completion. Only then can I take it and deliver you. You can walk safely in the world and not be affected by its lures, but you need me to walk by your side. I can lead you through the endless distractions the world puts out to lead you astray and pull you away from me. I want you to focus on me. Keep your eyes fixed on me, your Savior. I am your door to safety. All other doors lead to destruction. Don't be deceived and take your eyes off of me. I offer hope in a world that offers none. Oh, it appears to be hopeful. But what looks normal is deceiving. Psalms 25 verse 15 says, Mine eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the nets. These are the last hours. The world is in the end times. The world seems so convincingly normal, but all is not so. It is leading to the path of destruction. Soon many will find this out too late. Open your eyes. The world offers only false hope. Let me lead you. Surrender your life to me. I will open your eyes with my Holy Spirit and you will be renewed and see things the way they really are. And then you will see the truth. Only my Holy Spirit can open your spiritual eyes that so deceive you about the ways of the world. I am ready to give you the spiritual eye salve to help this transformation take place. You have but to ask me for it. Surrender your life, heart, soul, spirit, and let me give you the sight you need to navigate safely through the world. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18 says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. And that's the end of uh, chapter 6 which I said before is entitled Live in the World but do not be of the world. Very simple instruction. We have to live in the world because yes, we are physically here but we do not have to be of the world. In other words, we do not have to partake 
in the things of the world we have a choice we cannot choose right now to live in or out of the world because we have to because we are here but we can choose not to be of the world so this is a choice that each and every one of us have okay so let me uh, just get to the next chapter which is chapter 10 of this book and it is uh, entitled lust for the world lust for the world and it reads yes daughter we can begin Suzanne this is what I want to talk about today the sin that rises up in the hearts of men it is a sin of lust for the world all the ways of the world are evil evil men inspiring evil acts all that the world does is apart from God this world is not in my will so it is not of my will the world often professes to know me but it is far from me and my truth it runs full force in the direction that it willfully wants to go in without ever consulting me its maker this is evil to run outside of my will is evil the only will that is not evil is my will do you not see this my children how can this world move in the direction of God now when it has gotten so far from who I am and what I stand for I am for holiness purity of heart law and order truth and morality this world challenges all my ways and doesn't even come close to what my book sets out as truth and my everlasting way the world maligns me and my ways every chance it gets and those who follow me my ways are not respected or revered if they were this world would not experience the woes hardships disease and sadness that overwhelms it my way brings blessing the world's way brings cursings and cursings abound only those who really walk close to my word and me receive the peace and calm that I deliver even in the worst circumstances this is my bride who follows me without flinching she knows me she loves me she does not get far from me she knows I am her life source her power her love her strength where else can she go to receive this comfort she knows better than to leave my side for other lovers I have been tried tested and true to her I am her all in all no one can take my place in her eyes the world doesn't know my love it has settled for an inferior version of satisfaction how sad for those who follow after the world and its ways believing this world system holds all the answers soon this world will lose its last remaining light when I remove my bride from its mist once she is out of the picture the world will then be a dark place will be very dark desolate place there will be nothing to look for that resembles a guiding light of truth and beauty only gross ugliness and evil will ensue this is a world soon coming this is what is about to take place second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except they come of falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped 
so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God verses 6 and 7 says and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way a world that does not live by my laws and precepts is like a ship without a rudder this is a ship that is dead and dying a sinking ship soon children you will see death and destruction like never before because this world has chosen to turn away from its God its creator don't be fooled the world cannot continue to exist apart from my truth and my ways she is a sinking ship it is time to get off this ship are you coming when I call out my faithful ones will you come after me or will you stay behind clinging to the false hope that this world holds all the answers are you still listening to the wolves in sheep's clothing that nothing is wrong and all is well these wolves who do not really know me who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof are you going to continue to be misled and blinded because you enjoy the world too much second timothy chapter 3 verse 5 says i'm having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away come partake of god and discover there is a greater truth there is a greater peace there is a greater love i am he trace after me children get to know me i am worth pursuing i am worth knowing devoting time to i am the one who brought you into being do you not want to spend eternity with me there is an alternative it is a place that all the good of this life that comes from me is missing yes all that is good in this world comes from me i created it all without me none of the good things that you enjoy so and take for granted that spring from the heart of god will you ever experience again so give this some serious thought you decide your eternity with or without god you choose you decide am i taking you when i come to rescue my bride this is your choice but there are prices to be paid you must step away from your love and pursuit of the world because the world's way is not my way i will let you come to a decision about the direction you choose very few are choosing my way very few first john chapter 2 verse 15 says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man loves the world the love of the father is not in him and that's the end of the second chapter that i've chosen to bring to you today in accordance with the leading of the holy spirit and as you can hear it's all about being in the world living in the world but being separated from it now that very last verse uh, of scripture that i read in the second chapter there first john 2 15 is a very serious verse of scripture and it is saying that we should not love the world not only that but we should not love the things that are in the world very serious words something that we should think very carefully on ask yourself that question what are the things 
of the world? That is the question that we need to know, that we need to ponder on. What are the things in the world that the scripture is referring to here? That verse goes on to say, If any man loves the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. It's, that is quite straightforward. It is plain and simple. It's telling you that if you love the world, if you love the things that are in the world, then you can't love God. Because, as it was said in a, a previous scripture that was just read, that friendship with the world is enmity towards God. In other words, it is in total opposition to God. It's rebelling against God. So anything that is against God, how can it be love for God? Never. It will never be that way. So if we truly love God, then the things of the world will have no place in our hearts. Whether we have them or not will not be an issue because what we need we already have which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and his love. He is all that we need. He's all we need, the songwriter says. And he is truly all that we need. The thing about him, once we have him, he will make sure that everything we need to live in this world even the material things of this world, whatever we need to live, he will make sure that we have them. So as true followers of Christ, we have no need to worry. We have nothing to fear because our God, Jehovah Jireh, he is our provider. So he says, don't hold on to anything in this world. Those nice looking cars, forget about them. If he wants you to have one, he will make the way. But don't go fall in love with it because the thing is, when you fall in love with things, or especially these material things in the world, you take time out from God to pursue getting them. Things like houses and cars and so on. You'll want to waste your life away in a job that takes all of your time all of your energy just so that you can make that money get these things and you find when you kill yourself out you uh, when you go home and you might have a desire to read your bible and pray but you are so tired because you've been working so hard throughout the course of the day that you just don't have the energy to pick up your bible and read it or study it or meditate upon it you find that when you go down on your knees as soon as you close your eyes to start pray you start snoring so not a word to God comes out of your mouth and so this is how the enemy has us with these material things with the things that are of the world that we develop a craving for them and then we go after them and in doing so we push God aside we push the things of God aside to go after these things and as we just read in these two chapters one of the things that came out of it is that what is normal or what seems normal in the world is not really normal or it should not be normal to us as Christians, as true followers of Christ. Very important. You see, the world or the enemy, he will paint everything as normal because everybody does it. And sadly enough, uh, even us as Christians, we just follow the crowd. We want to look like the world. So every new fashion that comes out, we run after it. Of course, you need money to buy these things. How do you get money? You have to work. Work very hard. And so 
what I'm saying is these little subtle ways that the enemy uses to distract us, to pull us away from the things of God. All those nice hairdos and so on, all those things that develop a craving in our hearts. All those are things of the world that the Lord is warning us from. And even the shortcut typing that you'll find in texting and on Facebook where people will, will shorten all these words, you know, the Lord has revealed to me that even that is a thing of the world. Now, think about it. I mean, you may say, oh, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You're just typing the, the short way just to send a quick message, uh, you know, rather than to type up the whole full world, which is going to take longer. You just type the shortcut and people will understand. But think about it. This is what everybody does. This is what the world does. And you know, when I think about it, and I think about the shortcuts that we just type, what do they really mean? Now I'm not saying that it does, but we don't know. Could it be some demonic meaning behind those shortcut words? Are they demonic words disguised as shortcuts to lure us into the trap of the enemy? Again, I repeat, I'm not saying they are, but it is something that we should think about. It is something of the world. That means the enemy has something to do with it. And when we type a word, a shortcut, rather than typing out the whole word, you never know we could be spelling out something demonic and don't even know it could be talking darkness over ourselves we could be talking uh, evil over ourselves uh, over our families we don't know that's why it is good to be safe than sorry you know i myself used to in the past type in shortcuts as well but no i'm being very conscious of it and i would encourage all of you Christians out there to do the same now you never find these shortcuts in the Bible you will never find these shortcuts in the Bible so that enough should tell us that we should type out our words type them out in full so that everybody can understand especially the older folks we have these even young Christians they may have a word to say or to share because you choose to do all these shortcut typing you know not everybody can read it not everybody can understand it but everybody understands when you type the words out in full so let me just encourage especially you young ones to stay away from those shortcut typing be aware of it we do not know exactly what we're typing when we type these things because it is a worldly thing. Now another aspect of being in the world and doing the things of the world is that what seems normal is going out with a few friends every now and again after school, after work, after college, uh, university. Just to hang out with a friend, maybe have a drink or two. Not necessarily alcohol, but that is a normal thing. Yeah? It's something that most people do, most young people do, and most people in the world, uh, the working class people, at the end of the day, they will just, let me just uh, go out with uh, my buddy here or a few uh, of my friends and let us go out and hang out, spend some time together. Now, I'm not saying that this is a sin, I just want to be very clear, but this is a thing of the world. Why is it a thing of the world? Because the world does it. And we have to get into that frame of mind that whatever the world does, that we have to be careful and think twice not to do it. Now this hanging out with friends can lead to other things. Now unless you are on a mission to witness, I would encourage you not to involve in this practice. That's why... In 2 Corinthians, it says to come out from among them and be ye separate. 
And he says, go on to say that we should not touch the unclean thing. Uh, when we follow this instruction, the verse ends in, I will receive you. That's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. So although we live among them, we should not do the things that they do. The word here is telling us that we should come out from among them. Unless we are going there on kingdom business, we have no business there. We have no right there. Because you see that we should not be following them, but they should be following us. Now those of us who think that it's okay to do things like these that I've mentioned, I want you to read James chapter 4 verse 4 which says that you are adulterers and adulteresses because you have befriended the world, the same world that is an enmity with God. That verse says, Whoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. We read this earlier in one of those chapters. The world and the things of the world, if you... In involve yourself, if you engulf yourself, if you render any affection to words, the world or anything that is in the world, you are an adulterer or an adulteress, depending on what your gender is. And you will not enter heaven in that state. So it is a very serious word that you need to take very careful consideration for. As I said before, our main aim and desire should be to witness. Especially in these end times. We know that we're living in the last minutes of this world, I should say. You know, I was just going to say the last days, but time is so close that I, I can't even say that anymore. Because time, the clock is winding down very quickly. We are living in the last minutes of this end time. And as I said, our main aim right now, as we know the heart of God is for souls, our main aim should be to witness, to tell somebody about the love of Jesus, about what he did for them. The fact is, we are living in a season where the harvest is ripe and ready for reaping. Trust me, the harvest is ripe and is ready for reaping. No, it might not look so on the outside. It might look on someone. They might look happy on the outside. But inside, they're hurting. They're tearing up. They're looking for answers. They're looking for a solution for the problems that they're hiding. The point is, we cannot see inside of their hearts. We cannot see what's going on in their lives. We do not know unless they open up to us. We don't know what's going on. We might look on them and think, hey, all is good. All is well. Everything is alright with that person. And so we say, listen, I, I'm going to leave her and try and look for someone that faces down, someone that looks down, someone that looks sad, someone looks like they need help. And that might be your biggest mistake. We should not let anybody off. We should approach each and every person, not knowing who or what is going on with that person. We should be obedient to the leading of the Spirit. Oftentimes, the Spirit will lead us to such and such a person. But because the enemy puts a picture of that person that all is well, we decide not to approach that person. But we need to be obedient always in spite of how it looks. Because we do not know how God works things out. The Bible clearly tells us that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we cannot understand or know or ever conceive or ever understand how God works things out. But we just have to be obedient and do what he tells us to do. That same person, as I said, that looks good, that all looks well on the outside, when you approach them with the truth, with the gospel, they will happily and readily receive it because it will hold the answers 
that they're looking for. The harvest is ripe, my friends. It's this time for reaping. We have to put ourselves in that frame of mind that we have to be about the, the Father's business. We have to be about the business of the kingdom of God. Now you may be working, ask yourself this question, uh, am I making a difference where I am, where I am working? You go to work every day. Are you making a difference? Are you being a difference in your workplace? Or are you just fitting in with everybody else? You are the only Christian in that office. Everybody else are, are sinners to the core. Are you making a difference in that office? Do they even know that you're saved from the life that you live? I mean, you don't have to have a pin on your shirt or jacket saying, I'm a Christian. You don't have to go to work with a Bible in your hand for them to know that you're Christian, your lifestyle. For some of us, we do not need to say anything. We just have to live right and people will see the difference. Ask yourself, are you making a difference where you are? Can people see you for who you are, where you are? Are you following the crowd? Or is the crowd following you? No. Whenever someone is locked in darkness, what do they look for? What is the first thing do they look for? The first thing that anyone that is in darkness is going to look for is light. So that they can see to get out of there. Anywhere you find people that are dwelling in darkness, the first thing that they want to see is light. Everybody, it's a natural thing to want light so that we can see. It is the only with light we can see. We can't see in darkness. We can see in light. The Bible tells us in John 9, chapter 5, Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And interestingly, in Matthew 5, verse 14, it says, ye which is us as Christian are the light of the world. And again, I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I being a light where I am? Can people see through me? Is my light shining so that others can see? Am I being a difference in this world? Or am I just participating alongside the world? And that is why... Jesus is saying that we should live in the world as light. Be a light in the world. But do not be of the world. Don't let your light go out. Do not join with them and quench your light. Do not partake in the things of the world and quench your light. Be separate from them. Separate yourselves from darkness. So that those that are in the darkness can see you as the light and follow you and come to you. Or help and you can help them by showing them the way to Jesus so that is your word for today is to for us especially as Christian to be a light in this world to live in the world but not be of the world hallelujah very serious words for very serious times you are listening to the watchman <laughs> We have some work to do in self-examination. This is something that we have to do every day. Not just a, a one-off thing, but it's something that we have to do every day to examine ourselves constantly. We cannot afford to be blindfolded in these times. We cannot afford to be fooled by the enemy in these times. We have to be vigilant and very careful. The enemy, he's very subtle. He's very subtle in his ways and the things that he does. And if we are not careful, we will be fooled. And we will be lured. 
into his chops. So self-examination should be an everyday thing. Constantly ask yourself questions such as what I've mentioned before. Am I living for God or for the world? Am I pursuing the world? Am I pursuing worldly things? Or, or am I pursuing God? And the things that are of God. Do the things of the world captivate me? Do I have a desire to have certain things? Be it as little as a shoe. Do I have a burning desire to have such a thing? Or is my desire and my affections set totally on God? To get closer to God, to walk closer with Him, to be elevated to a next level in Him. Is my desire for more of the word is my desire to talk with my God to pray to him without season as I said before examine yourselves these are good questions to ask yourself and be honest with yourself Time is running short. Very soon than we think, the rapture will happen. And if we are not about the Father's business, we are going to be left behind. Even though we may call ourselves Christians, we will be left behind if we are not about the Father's business. This is a very serious thing. Some of us might think that getting saved is all that what is, all that is what matters. But God, when He saves us, He does not save us just for saving's sake. He does not save us just for so. It's so that He can put us to work in His vineyard or in His vineyard. To reap the harvest when it is ripe and as we've heard before as we know for a fact that the harvest right now it is ripe it is ready for reaping are you in the field right now reaping are you in the field right now reaping the harvest that the Lord wants you to harvest as an individual or are you still standing back? Everybody else that have their spiritual eyes opened, they are there out there in that field. They are out there in that field doing what God has called them to do. Very few are there. But God is calling you out there right now to join the others in the field. To not... Put yourself in a position where you will be left behind when he comes to take you to heaven. So, this word is for you. To encourage you to get on with the Father's business. To get into the vine vineyard. Start Reaping. Get up your sickle. Hold your sickle in your hand. Get out into the field. And start working. It 
is time for that. It has already started. Join the bandwagon. Step into the field and start to do what you need to do. Hallelujah. So as time is running down uh, towards the end of this program, I want to reach out uh, as usual to those of you who are listening. You have been invited to listen to this radio program. Through what was said, you have been convicted. You, the Holy Spirit, have been speaking to you, to your heart. Join you to God, and you want to make that step right now. Perhaps you don't know how, what to do, what to say. You're here for a reason, so I'll help you. I will help you with that. I have a prayer that I will go through with you. And I want you to just repeat. uh, Repeat it after me. It's called the sinner's prayer. And it's a prayer that will give you salvation at the end of it. When you say it. The only thing that I would ask you to do according to the word of God is that you believe according to the word of God that whatever you ask in the name of Jesus that you will receive it. That includes asking him to come into your heart, asking him for his free gift of salvation. Once you ask for it with a sincere heart, he will give it to you. So I'm going to go into that prayer right now. Let's repeat it after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of the true and living God. I also know that you came to earth and died for my sins. You said in your word that if I confess my sins that you will forgive me of them. So with a sincere desire to serve you I ask you please to forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe according to your word, Lord, that you are that you have heard and have answered my prayer. I ask you, Lord, to write my name in the book of life today. I thank you for answering my prayer. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you are, if you joined me in that prayer, if you have said that prayer, I have to congratulate you and report that you are now saved. You are now a part of the family of Christ. Congratulations and welcome. Hallelujah. You're serving a great, big, wonderful God, an awesome God, who will look after you from now until the end. Just stay close to him. Stick to him. What you have received today, your salvation, hold on tight to it. Don't let it go. Don't be fooled in any way. Stay strong through the reading of your word. If you don't have a Bible, find one, get one. You can even download it free off the internet. Read it, study it, meditate on it. Talk to him, talk to him. Read your word and talk to God in prayer. It's like a two-way communication. You listen by reading the word and you talk in prayer so do that 
and you will find that you will grow even stronger spiritually as time goes on. Hallelujah. Yes, we have come to the end of the program and I want to thank you for tuning in, for listening once again. And uh, it has been a very exciting program today and I do hope that uh, you were blessed and those of you who are not saved that are listening, that you have taken that bold step today by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I've come to the end of the program and I want to thank you again for listening to the Watchman Radio Program. You are in tuned to Everlasting Life Radio. I was your host, Minister Curtis Roach from Shiloh Revival Tamanaka. And I want to extend an invitation to you if you're in London or planning a trip to London to visit us uh, this Sunday or any Sunday. And you can find us at Parkview School on West Green Road in London. And the postcode there is N153QR. You, you can uh, visit us there any Sunday from 12 p.m. Uh, we finish worshiping at 3 p.m. If you'd like to contact me for any further information, you can uh, find me on Facebook and leave me a message uh, either on my personal profile or the profile for this program. Uh, both are in, well, uh, one is in my name, Minister Curtis Roach. You can find my personal profile there by searching for that uh, the spelling is c-u-r-t-i-s-r-o-a-c-h or you can uh, search for the watchman radio program that's the page for this program you can uh, leave me a message on either one of these and i'll be able to respond to you uh, you can also follow me on twitter at roach underscore curtis or you can uh, subscribe to my youtube channel where I post uh, all of these uh, radio programs, uh, the past and present, you can find them all there on the, my channel. The search for my name. Hallelujah. So, again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, you can find me here uh, on Friday. I'll be here from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And again, every Tuesday and Friday, next Tuesday from 3 to 4 p.m. So I'm here every week, those two days. So tune in and be blessed. Jesus come.